So hello my friends, Devon Lennox here, Photography PX. In today's video, we'll cover the best cameras for video. Do know you can find timestamps and links in the description down below, as well as the pinned comment. And also know this is not a sponsored video. Let's get started. The camera market has seen significant advancements over the last few years. So much so, even entry-level models are now boasting more video features than the flagships of years prior. And now with the rise of 4K as a keepsake, camera video capabilities are a feature we rarely overlook. And what once was a revolutionary addition to a flagship DSLR is long gone. Right now, anyone can shoot high resolution 4K and even 8K video in some cases, and the secrecy amongst many high-end camcorders and cinema cameras is now fully available for even beginners. Instead, the camera market is dominated by mirrorless and DSLR cameras thanks to their impressive image quality, interchangeable lenses, and affordability. And these days, these cameras are the center point of video production. But with so many powerful cameras available on the present market, picking the best camera for your next video production could be slightly tricky, especially considering most of us have a smartphone at hand that is perfectly apt for the task. And it's an endeavor that will require some research, but to help in that search, we created a detailed guide on the factors to consider when looking at cameras for video. And you can find that detailed guide in the pinned comment down below. And we've also compiled a list of the best cameras for video on the present market. Coming at number five, Panasonic's S1H. The S1H revolutionized the Cine industry following its release. It has a 24.2 megapixel sensor, 6K 24P, DCI 4K 60P, and 1080p 180p video. It also features a 3.2 inch vari angle touchscreen, dual card slots, a status LCD, a full size HDMI, image stabilization, a tally lamp, weather ceiling, log profiles, and headphone and microphone ports. The S1H remains one of the few hybrid mirrorless cameras with a dedicated fan to systematically cool the camera to prevent overheating during longer recordings. And its particular design allows you to record indefinitely without fear. It also was the first camera to debut a 6K video, but it provides 52 different combinations of crops, resolutions, and codecs, giving you enormous flexibility if you don't want 6K specifically. The S1H is also one of the few cameras in this class providing vector scopes and waveforms for more advanced monitoring. Thus, you can avoid using an external monitor for some projects and still capture well-exposed and accurate footage. Overall, Panasonic's S1H has little competition, and it serves as a direct opponent to cinema cameras twice its price. It's a revolution amongst mirrorless cameras and sets a new bar. Coming at number 4, Canon's EOS R5. Canon's EOS R5 is the current flagship in the RF lineup. It has a 45 megapixel sensor, 8K DCI 30P, 4K DCI 120P, and 1080p 60P video. It also features a 3.2 inch vari angle touchscreen, image stabilization, a status LCD, HDR, zebras, log profiles, dual card slots, and headphone and microphone ports. The R5 boasts Canon's latest dual pixel CMOS AF2 from the flagship 1DX Mark III. This autofocusing system has 5940 selectable points that cover the entire sensor, but they've updated it with Head Detect AF, which delivers confident autofocusing and blazing fast speeds of 0.05 seconds. Additionally, Canon's redesigned the sensor by improving the scan rate to virtually remove rolling shutter, and they've upped the durability to match the 1DX series, but it remains incredibly lightweight and matches the lower end EOS R in size. Overall, Canon's EOS R5 is a significant milestone in the RF lineup and changes their fate. It's a camera that punches hard with several unseen features and remains their best release to date. Coming in at number three, Sony's A7S Mark III. Sony's A7S Mark III is the long-awaited replacement to the hit A7S II, but a worthwhile wait indeed. It has a 12.1 megapixel sensor, 4K 120p, and 1080p 240p video. It also features a 3-inch vari-angle touchscreen, dual card slots, a full-size HDMI, image stabilization, weather ceiling, log profiles, and headphone and microphone ports. The A7S III obtains Sony's latest hybrid AF system from the flagship FX9 cinema camera. This autofocusing system brings 759 phase detect AF points with 93% coverage over the sensor, but it also brings real-time tracking for humans and animals. The result, while the best autofocusing performance the A7S series has seen 
yet, but like its predecessor, it offers class-leading low-light performance with usable footage up to ISO 51200, yet it does so with 16-bit raw output or in 10-bit for unlimited internal recording with the longest battery life of all Alpha series cameras. Overall, Sony's A7S III redefines the lineup and it ups the real-world performance that pros demand. If you want an alternative to the pricier FX9, this is it. Coming in at number 2, Panasonic's S5. Panasonic's S5 is their latest full-frame mirrorless camera. It has a 24-megapixel sensor, 4K UHD 60p, and 1080p 180p video. It also features a 3-inch vari-angle touchscreen, image stabilization, weather sealing, log profiles, dual card slots, and headphone and microphone ports. The S5 uses Panasonic's long-standing 225-point contrast AF system with depth from defocus, but they've updated the algorithms with this model with body detection so that the camera can focus on subjects turned away. Though crucially, the S5 is one of a few full-frame cameras to provide unlimited 10-bit 422 recording internally, and it's one of even less so with waveforms for advanced monitoring and anamorphic recording. Overall, Panasonic's S5 is arguably their best hybrid camera ever released. It offers much of the class-leading features from the S1H without its price, and it makes an excellent entry point into the Lumix S lineup. Coming in at number one, Fujifilm's X-T4. Fujifilm's X-T4 is their latest high-end flagship APS-C camera. It has a 26.1 megapixel sensor, 4K DCI 60p, and 1080p 240p video. It also features a 3-inch vari-angle touchscreen, image stabilization, log profiles, dual card slots, weather sealing, and headphone and microphone ports. With the X-T4, Fuji's debuted in-body stabilization to the line, fundamentally changing its use. But this camera also obtains the Boost IS mode, which creates a locked-off tripod effect by maximizing the stabilization, and it's an interesting option that removes the need to use a tripod to film handheld static scenes. Fuji's also added the new W-series battery, doubling the camera's lifespan, and they've now supplied 10-bit oversampled video via HDMI, along with 12 historic film simulations to add a unique flair. Overall, Fujifilm's X-T4 is their most comprehensive release to date, and one that matches several pricier Panasonic flagships, but as a package, it provides virtually everything a budding filmmaker can ask for without being overly tough on the bank account. Sure, it lacks some of the genuinely high-end features its rivals possess, but as a package, it delivers outstanding value for money. So there you have it, my friends. There's our list of the best cameras for video. For more information on this list or to read the detailed guide, look at the pinned comment in the description down below, and I'll take you right to the full post. I've been your host, Von Lennox. We will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you found the contents of today's video insightful and it added value to you. If you're new here, please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. Also, leave us a like and a comment in the description down below. Let us know if we overlook something or we missed something that we covered in today's video. I've been your host, Devon Lennox, photography. <laughs>